Hello everyone, my name is Hiroki Tokawa, presenting from Tokyo. I'm a research engineer working for Japan Sewage Works Agency. It's a great pleasure for me to share with you the results of our recently finished R&D work here on AI-based guidance system of operating parameters for municipal wastewater treatment. This work is a part of a research project called B Dash by a national government in Japan, carried out by a consortium of Japan Sewage Works Agency, Yaskawa Electric Corporation, and Maizawa Industries, financially and technically supported by National Institute for Land and Infrastructure Management. This is the outline of what we did in this work, where a real-time guidance system of operating parameters in wastewater treatment process was developed. This is basically for operators of large-scale municipal wastewater treatment plants using AI-based prediction with random forest. And in this study, its predicting power was evaluated using a real wastewater treatment plant data. So I, I would start from background of the work. As you know, in municipal wastewater treatment plants, we use biological treatment processes, mostly activity sludge processes. We have been using this for a long time, more than 100 years, but it still requires expertise by skilled engineers in its operation. Here in some nations with shrinking population like in Japan, a lot of aging engineers have been retiring far faster than supply of young engineers, and the shortage of skilled engineers is getting a severe social issue. In this situation, operators' support system, which might substitute skilled engineers, would be accepted by many treatment plants. This graph shows the change of national population in some nations from the year 1950 to future projection to the end of the present century. Although the population has kept on increasing in US, in some nations like Japan and Germany, national population has ac actually started to decline around the year 2000 to 2010. In this situation, now we have AI, artificial intelligence technologies. There have been a number of projects recently in Japan in which use of AI is investigated in the field of wastewater treatment for different purposes, as shown here, including diagnosis of equipment or treatment performance and guidance or online control. These four are data-driven approaches, while there are some projects which use image analysis for the purpose of, for example, judging the state of activated sludge. Among them, what I will talk in this presentation is operational guidance system. In this work, our principal objective was to evaluate the possibility of the AI-based guidance system for practical use. So using full-scale data, we try to make it clear whether the prediction by the system was within acceptable error range compared to the actual operation by experts. Now I would show a brief outline of the guidance system which we developed in this study. It's a support system for plant operators working online basis. Its function is quite simple, just giving operators recommended set values of some operating parameters like airflow rate or waste activity sludge rate according to real-time prediction of these parameters using AI-based algorithm. This is the image of the system. It can be installed with just an additional personal computer to the existing SCADA system, providing operators with recommended set values periodically on real-time basis. It collects online process data from SCADA system at a given time interval, for example, every one hour, and predicts selected operating parameter values at the next time step. This predicted re result is shown to operators as recommended set values. In this prediction, we use random forest, a kind of AI-based algorithm, and it works like imitating the past operation, which was included in the training data used in model creation. Finally, the operators would decide whether or not to change the operation. So this is just a guidance system, and at this moment, we haven't thought about using this for online control purpose. Here, I would add some comments on the random forest. It is not at all new. It has been used in machine learning for classification and mostly regression purposes. 
In this algorithm, a number of decision trees consisting of randomly selected process variables are created. When this is used for regression, each tree outputs a value of the target parameter from the relevant variable values in input data. Finally, averaged value of the outputs from all the trees is taken as a result. One advantage of using random forest is that it can output the specific parameter variable importance for each variable used in input data. It is a kind of relative contribution of each variable to the prediction. And from this, people can think which data gave the large influence on particular prediction result. This may lead to operators insight about what's happening in their process and pre prevent the prediction from falling into the black box like in other machine learning algorithm. Here, I would move to the methodologies. In this study, predicting power of the guidance system was evaluated with real wastewater treatment plant data. We selected two operating parameters as targets of prediction, airflow rate and waste activity search rate, because these two were important for the performance of any activity search processes, and in addition, expertise is required to change their set value. First, we collected data from a plant, then we developed the model, and its prediction was evaluated. As I mentioned before, this system is finally to work online, but in this study, all these steps were carried out offline. So we first withdrew all the necessary data from the target plant. So for collecting data, we selected a municipal wastewater treatment plant operated in Kita Kyushu city located in the southeastern part of Japan. This is conventional activity search plant with 44 megaliter per day of capacity. In this plant, aeration rate and waste activity search rate were both operated manually. And this was good for us because we could compare the prediction by the system with actual operation by operators. We withdrew all the online process data stored in SCADA system and finally selected 168 data items recorded every one hour for a period of three years. We divided these three years data to two parts, first two years of training data for model creation and the following one year of test data used for validation. In model creation, we took these three steps. We first created model with training data under a given condition. Then we made a prediction using one year test data. And the results were compared with actual operation by operators for the same period. These steps were repeated many times with different model creation condition, including input data. Here I mean the number of data items and the length of training data and also random forest parameters like the depth of each decision tree and the number of these trees. When comparing the prediction with actual operation data, we use MAPE, mean absolute percentage error as a primary indicator. This means that we basically validated the prediction by calculating annual average error. Now I've switched to result part. We created a prediction model for air flow rate and wash rate with different number of data items ranging from 1 to through 168. The resulting MAPE values for the test data are shown in this graph. You can see that increasing the data items would not always result in improved prediction. Actually, around 20 items were enough for air flow rate prediction and quite small number of items around 5 gave the minimum error in case of wash rate. Similarly, we investigated the effect of the length of training data from 30 days to for two years. Here we can see in this graph that longer is better. We can say that in model creation, we should use training data with a period of at least years older. We also checked the effects of random forest parameters. We can say that the effect of the number of trees shown here with different colors is much smaller compared with the effect of the depth of each tree. In addition, the effects was apparently different between air flow and wash rates predictions. And we concluded that it was necessary to optimize these model creation conditions for each target on, for example, trial and error basis as was carried out in this study. 
This is a prediction of air flow rate with the best set of training condition. Input data and random forest parameters with orange line for prediction and blue line for reference actual operation. This is a result of one year prediction with test data and the MAP value annual average error was calculated to be 4.2%. This is much smaller than our target value of 10% and we concluded that the prediction of air flow rate was possible with practical acceptable error. However, you may notice that the prediction in the period of last couple of weeks is not so good compared with other periods. So this is a magnified view of the same data. This left one is one week data with good prediction where we can see that the system was able to track the actual operation almost perfectly. In contrast, this right hand side graph is also one week data but with poor prediction, which I mentioned before. You can see that the system apparently could not follow these peaks of airflow rates. Actually, these peak airflow rates were extremely high in this plant and such events were not included in the previous two years used for training data. This shows that the present system is not able to make a good prediction in case of unexperienced events in training data. This means that it is not a good way to use a fixed model Instead, we should think about updating the model periodically in order to follow the long-term change in treatment condition. This is a result for waste activated sludge rate. In this case, annual average error was calculated to be 8.1%. This was within the acceptable range, but significantly larger compared to airflow rate. In case of WAS rate, Operators refer to the condition of sludge processing facilities as well as that of biological treatment. And in order to improve the prediction performance, we may have to uptake more data from sludge processing. Here, I would summarize the results. For model creation, we tried to find out the best condition in terms of input data in some random forest parameters. As a result, optimal model creation conditions seem to depend on the prediction target and we will have to follow the similar trial and error steps when we use the system to other treatment plants or other parameters. As for prediction, trained model was able to track the actual operation with an acceptable error of 4% for air flow rate and 8% for WAS rate on annual average basis. However, the system showed poor prediction when the plant had been operated under extraordinary condition which had not been experienced in the training data. This suggests that periodical model update would be essential. Actually, computing time for model creation in this study was less than 20 minutes with normal personal computer, and we think that automatic model update would be quite realistic. Finally, I will show brief results of questionnaire survey to plant operators in Japan performed within this project in order to know whether AI-based technology would be accepted by practical users. When we asked the interest to the present guidance system, 64% of respondents gave positive answer and operating parameters which they wanted to be supported included air flow rate, was and RAS rates, and chemical addition. When we asked the positive possible acceptance of automatic operation by AI technology in future, positive answer accounted for 83%. This was much more than what we expected showing that people were getting feel less resistance to AI technologies. Okay, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, just contact me. Thank you again.